Hey everybody, Chris Dillon here of Gamkito, and today we're going to start with a blank file and write a video game real quick. Going to do the simplest classic style of game we can, which of course is going to be a Pong-like game, or a game in a similar genre to games like Pong and Ralph Bayer's tennis game and so on. And we're going to be using HTML5 JavaScript for simplicity, so no special tools, IDEs, compilers, etc. needed. Uh, window on load will call this code as soon as the game gets started. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to use document.get element by ID that's going to let us retrieve our uh, game canvas up above. We're going to do c.get context to grab our sort of graphic straw buffer uh, or at least how we access it. Let's use set interval to get an update function being called 30 times a second function update and inside here let's do a uh, fill style is going to be black. We're going to black out the canvas at the start of each frame we're also going to draw a fill rectangle. That's going to be the dimensions of the screen. Uh, canvas width, canvas height. Uh, let's also get our panels drawing and our ball. So those are all going to be, we're going to have to create these variables in a second. Um, paddle thickness, paddle height. So the same thing for paddle 2y. Uh, canvas width divided by panels, paddle thickness. That should all do that. Oop, let's go up top and create those variables. And 1y equals 2y equals, uh, starting both at 40, doesn't really matter, equals 10. Got kind of some typos here. Uh, we're also going to need some ball values. So let's make that 50 at first. Uh, x velocity, y velocity will refer to our ball's x velocity, y velocity, because it's the only object we have yet. Let's also make one for ball dimension, which we're not going to use in collision, but it'll be handy for visual reasons. So let's go and draw our ball, which is going to be ball x, ball y, ball dimension ball dimension and let's be a little fancier here and center our ball on that coordinate since we're using a rectangle. It's going to subtract half the width, half the height. Uh, let's get the ball moving. So it's going to be plus equals uh, x velocity, y velocity, and let's get uh, the ball bouncing. So if the ball goes above the top of the screen and uh, the ball is on its way upward, so avoid a collision issue later, then we're going to reverse the y velocity equals negative y velocity. Uh, okay, it's going to look pretty similar. If we're going off the other side of the screen, you'll see I'm, I'm just in a plain text editor, right? Nothing fancy here. I'm not using any, even anything that gives me automatic indentation. That would be unfair. Uh, and so now let's do the sides. These get a little more complicated. So let's first test if ball x goes less than the left side. We first want to know is the ball y between the top of the paddle and above the bottom of the paddle? Because if it is, we can bounce it x velocity equals equals negative x velocity. Let's also then find a delta y where that's going to be the uh, ball y minus paddle one y plus half the height to give us our center. A oh, little typos. Uh, in that case, then y velocity is going to equal dy times. Let's make it a third of that. That's just the dilution value for tuning purposes. Otherwise, it means that we missed it. And so in that case, we're going to award a point score two to player two, which we haven't created that very bit. We're about to. And it's called reset. Haven't created the function yet, but we're about to. So let's go ahead now and make our function reset. Function reset. That's going to center the ball. Canvas width divided by two. There's our horizontal center. Recently changed keyboards. Maybe it was the wrong time of year to do this. Uh, there's that. We've got x velocity is going to reverse. Y velocity just give it a sane sort of reset value. We also said we'd add uh, some score numbers. So score one equals score two. Like I say, we're being kind of reckless here. We're not doing a lot of prettiness, but we're just going to show how little code it maybe actually takes anymore to make a game in 2015 in something like HTML5 JavaScript on Canvas, which is a platform I do recommend for beginners, although maybe not writing code uh, in this kind of slapdash fashion here with short variable names and stuff. Uh, so there's going to be our score on the other side of the screen. Uh, we have one side accounted for. Let's get the ball bouncing off the other side. And so to test to be the right side, we want to do greater than canvas width. And of course, we want to change which paddle we're looking at and doing the center of and who's getting the point. And then we also need to get uh, AI working. So for AI, we could make a separate function for this, but let's, let's not bother. Let's make another AI speed value so we can tune it more easily. And we'll say that if paddle 2y, uh, the center of it, is above the ball, so it's above it, so we need to move it down. P2y plus equals AI speed. And it's going to be called a shaky paddle if we have the uh, 
ball going relatively straight, but it's going to be fine for this kind of purpose. Okay, so we've got the AI written. Let's also add uh, some code to get the player to be able to move their paddle, right? So in that case, then we're going to do C dot add event listener, and that's going to be mouse move. I'm going to write an anonymous function here, meaning there's no name for the function, just inline. And here we're going to say paddle one y is will equal e dot client y, which won't account for scrolling, but not too bad. And we're going to divide, uh, subtract out half the height of the paddle, which should center it. And so now there is our game. I want to refresh. You'll see that the AI is trying to chase it. When it hits the ball, it controls it. Uh, I'm going to let it pass me so you'll see it scores a point. Boink, there's its point. Hopefully this one makes it past. Boop, there's my point. And if I knock the ball back, you'll see we have some sort of rudimentary ball control. Now, this is, again, a very slapdash, quick way to program it. I wouldn't teach this technique this quickly for someone starting out. Uh, my technique, though, is similar, but a little better explained. And if you want to find that out, this is completely free. You can do it tonight. I do have a three-hour version of what I just showed you here tonight uh, where I go into much more detail about explaining every single step of how and why this game code works to do this very, very simple classic game. A thousand people are taking it every month. 10,000 people are not taking it overall. Uh, it's code your first game. It's a free course on Udemy. You literally can finish it tonight with a text editor, with a web browser, standard stuff. And you can get to it from either going to codeyourfirstgame.com without hyphens. That'll redirect you to the Udemy course or code dash yourfirstgame.com with hyphens. With or without, either way, we'll redirect you to this free Udemy course. You can program your first game tonight, HTML5 JavaScript, and be started well on your way to having made your first program. So if you've never written a game before, here's a way into it. Uh, I want to thank you for listening and uh, following along. I look forward to playing the games in the future that you're going to make. Thanks.